the sample questions or the practice questions that we're dealing with. Let's go through all of them bit by bit and make sure that we understand what's going on. So sample question 2.1.4 says, write the nuclear symbol for a substance containing 15 protons and 16 neutrons. So first of all, we have to remember what is a nuclear symbol. So that's our first key part. Well, nuclear symbol, we have some element symbol. We just use X to represent what that some symbol is going to be. And then we have our A number over our Z number, and sometimes we're going to have a charge up here, so let's do a Q for charge. Uh, the A number means the mass number. The Z number represents the atomic number. Now we need to remember what these different numbers mean and how we can get them from what's given to us, protons and neutrons. Um, it doesn't tell us in here if it's anything with a charge. It just says some substance. If we said element or atom, then we would know that the protons are equal to the electrons. If it said ion or cation or anion, we would know that the protons are not equal to the electrons. But since it's just saying substance and it doesn't give us any information about electrons, we're going to assume that this Q is nothing, that there's no charge. So really we're going to write it out A, Z, X. The mass number, we know, comes from two different values. The mass number is equal to the protons plus the neutrons. The atomic number is just the number of protons. So we can start doing a little bit of addition for the mass number. We have 15 protons plus 16 neutrons. That means that my mass number is equal to 31. Or my A number is equal to 31. My number of protons, or my atomic number, is 15. So I know I'm going to have 15 as my Z number. Then I have to figure out what this symbol is, what X actually is. And I use my atomic number, or my number of protons, to figure that out. So I know that I have to have an atomic number of 15. There's only one element that has an atomic number of 15. And all I have to do is look at my periodic table to figure out what that is. Well, upon reviewing the periodic table, I see that element with the atomic number 15 or 15 protons is phosphorus and the symbol for phosphorus is P. So I'm going to write this out once and for all, phosphorus rather than an X, and then my mass number on top, I calculated that to be 31, and my Z number, my atomic number on the bottom is 15. And again, I'm assuming that it's nothing with a charge since it's not telling us anything about the electrons. So my final answer is that. The next problem is asking us how are radioisotopes used. Some of the things that we can say is that they're used for medical tracers. So they're used to figure out things like if you have a thyroid problem. They can be used for irradiation. So they can irradiate our foods. And it's also used for archaeological dating. So use that beautiful carbon-14 to figure out how old something that they find is, as long as it was carbon-based to start with. Oops. The third question says, describe and explain the operation of a mass spectrometer. So we know that we have to go through the steps of, first we have to vaporize the substance. Once it's in the vapor form, then we can ionize it. So we're going to remove some of the electrons that are in it so that we can figure out um, what the actual mass is. Those electrons don't produce enough mass for it to matter for our uh, mass of the substance. Then we're going to speed it up through the machine. And we're going to use some magnets to deflect those atoms. And the amount of deflection that we get 
will tell us once it lands on a sensor that we've set up, it will tell us not only the mass of those different isotopes, so it tells us mass and the relative abundance of those. So it gives us a mass value and a relative abundance, so a percentage abundance, which we can then use to figure out the average mass of that isotope. The next problem, 2.2.3, it says that lead has a molar mass of 207.1 grams per mole. Um, the MOBI system doesn't work nicely. This should be superscripted. These should also be superscripted. Assuming that it is composed entirely of 206 isotope of lead, so we just talked about this, that is my mass. So this is one isotope of lead, this is one that has a mass of 206. I have one that has a mass of 207 and another that has a mass of 208. So those are my three isotopes of lead. And that the percentage of the two lightest isotopes are equal. So I know that the relative abundance of 206 and 207 are going to be the same. And I need to calculate the relative percentages of these isotopes in the natural element. So I'm going to do a little bit of algebra here. I'm going to say that I know overall that my mass is 207.2 grams per mole. Well, let's look at the general format for this first. We know that our uh, average mass is going to be equal to the actual mass of the isotope. So we'll do an M for that, times the percent abundance, or in decimal form, so percent divided by 100, the relative abundance of it, plus, and then I'm going to do that for each of my isotopes, no matter how many I have. So this is my mass in my first one, the relative abundance of my first one the mass of my second one times the relative abundance of my second one, so on and so forth. So with that general information, and with the weird problem that it gives me here, I can say, well, 207.2 grams per mole is going to be equal to, I know that one of them has a mass of 206, and I don't know the abundance of it. That's what I'm figuring out. So I'm just going to say that it's x. And that is going to be added to the 207, also x, because those two, it says, have the same uh, percentages. So I can call them both x. Plus, now this is where we get a little special, my 208 is going to be multiplied by 1 minus 2 times x, coming from the fact that I know that overall my percentage will be 100, or 1 in this case because I'm de dealing with single numbers as opposed to having multiplied them by 100, minus 2x's because those 2x's are right there. Then I can start multiplying through and adding things and subtracting things. I get 207.2 is equal to 413x, that comes from the 206 plus the 207, plus I want to do some PEMDAS. I'm going to multiply this through. I get 208 minus 416x. And then I'm going to rearrange all of this. I find that x is equal to 0 0.27 or 27%. So 206 PB has a relative abundance of 27% percent. And the 207 PB has a relative abundance of 27 percent. My 208 PB is going to be equal to 100 minus 27 minus 27 and that gives me a grand total of 46%. I did that because I know that overall my percentage has to equal 100%. So those are my percentages. The next problem, is there one? 
my next problem disappeared. This one is it. So write the electron configuration for chlorine and how do you know what ion it will form. So one thing I need to do is remember that I'm reading it like a book and I always start with the first energy level. Looking at the periodic table, I have the S shape and there are two electrons or hydrogen and helium, two electrons in that um, energy level. So that's my first part. I'm not to chlorine yet. That's what I'm looking to get to. So I'm going to go down. I'm keeping reading my book, so I go down to the next level, which is my second energy level. I have the S shape, and there are two electrons in that um, energy level, the lithium and the beryllium. Each box of the periodic table counts as an added electron. And then I keep going. I uh, skip the expanse of the uh, transition metals for now, and I get 2P... 6. Now I'm all the way to neon, but I'm still not to chlorine, so I go down to the next energy level. 3s2. I again skip the expanse, and I get 3p5. So my electron configuration from chlorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. These, remember, are your um, electrons. These are your energy levels. And these are the shapes of those uh, shells that they are in. And if you remember, we have S's as one shape, P's over here, D's there, and F's down there, S, P, D, F. And so I've got my first energy level, S, two electrons, so on and so forth. So we're looking to see what ion it forms. Well, this tells us a whole bunch of information. Um, one of the things that it's telling us is that my first energy level and my second energy level are completely full. My third energy level, though, only has seven total electrons. So I have two plus five valence electrons, so seven valence electrons, or my outer energy level electrons and we know that they always shoot to have an electron configuration like a noble gas so they want to be in the same iso electronic series as a noble gas and the nearest noble gas to chlorine is argon and that has an electron configuration of 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6. So we know that all it has to do to get from here to here is add an electron. Well, we know that electrons are negative, so really what we're doing is adding a negative. So my chlorine becomes an anion, a negative ion, and it becomes a one negative ion because it has gained just one electron to be like the or in the same isoelectronic series as a noble gas argon. The final question asks us to write the nuclear symbol for tungsten 156. So again, this goes back to what we were talking about in sample question 2.1.4. Uh, this time, Tungsten, we know, is W. I can look at the periodic table to look at the atomic number, and that is 74. So I have a big W, 74. The 156 represents the mass of the isotope, 156. We're assuming, since it's not giving us any information about ions, that there's going to be no ion there. That simply is my answer.